Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a card I've actually managed to repair, and it should be abundantly obvious what I've done. There's a great big red bodge wire right there. So, um, yeah, this is an HD 7970 VaporX that I picked up off of eBay. And uh, basically the description was, no display out and that it's disgusting. And, uh, yes, it is very... I mean, this this isn't the worst of it. Like, the heatsink is... is that a feather? There's a feather in there. Oh no, that might be a dandelion. Anyway, heatsink, quite bad, right? Rather dirty. Um, the heatsink is nothing compared to what was on the actual PCB itself. So this thing was absolutely freaking disgusting. I've since washed it. Um, you know, water, dish soap, alcohol rinse at the end of all that, because obviously you don't want to leave water residue on everything. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have washed the card, so at this point it's like nice and pristine, and it does run. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I've the, like uh, evidently I know what I'm doing for once. Um, so yeah, I picked up the card, you know, got it for 28 quid, so not really a bad deal. Um, actually, I think it's a great deal, especially now that I got it working. So yeah, I got the card, haven't cleaned the heatsink, which is why it's on this heatsink. Also, this heatsink's less bulky, and it gives me access to all the, the probe points. This heatsink is off of some HD7970. Uh, MSI HD7970. Uh, anyway, it's a 3 gig VaporX card from, from Sapphire. And uh, yeah, so initially, you know, first thing I did was, let's, let's see, does it turn on? And then I started probing around for the different voltages, so we checked it, well, actually before even turning it on, I, I just checked the card while it was still assembled for a uh, short circuit. So I checked my core resistance, core was reading like 7 ohms or something like that, so that's in spec, that's good. Uh, 7 ohms to ground from uh, basically, to, to the easiest way to check that kind of resistance is like instead of, f you know, messing around with the little multi-layer ceramics behind the core, you just take the V-core VRM over there and you measure from the, the leg of the, the output leg of the choke. Actually, it doesn't matter which side of the choke you measure from because um, like for your multimeter, that thing is essentially a short circuit. You just, anyway, it doesn't ma matter which leg you measure from, but uh, if you, so I measure from the output one and then you measure one to ground, seven ohms, good. So resistance on the card was good for, for V-Core. Then I checked my memory power up here. So that is actually kind of interesting. This VRM is a seven plus one plus one. So we have VDDCI over there, memory power up here. Um, memory power was in spec, it was I think 67 ohms or thereabouts to ground, so that was good. VDDCI was I think about 30, 20, something, uh, something like that, like tens of ohms, so that's all good, right? Because these are low voltage rails, so the resistance on the other side of them is relatively low. And in fact, on modern GPUs, like say NVIDIA 10 series cards, if you try to measure the core resistance, a lot of the larger, like higher end cards will just read zero ohms, straight up. They'll just read like 0 0.1 or zero. Um, because, say, a 1080 Ti by spec is 0 0.08 ohms core resistance. So, um, yeah, anyway, checked all the resistances, right? Everything was looking good. I checked the minor rails down here. Resistances were fine. Then I checked, uh, you know, PCIe uh, power, uh, so 12 volts PCIe to ground, um, then 12 volts down here to ground, 3.3 volts down here to ground. Everything was good. Everything was in spec. Um, as in, and nothing was short-circuited, right? Nothing was reading suspiciously low. Everything was within, like, either kilo-ohms or higher, right? Because obviously if there's, like, a couple hundred ohms, well, something somewhere is going to get pretty hot if you shove two, two, 12 volts into it, um, depending on how large it is. Um, so, yeah, checked all of my resistances. Resistance is checked out. So the next step was just clean the card and, you know, try power it up. And the idea was, like, worst case scenario, this doesn't work at all, and uh, I'm going to just scrap it and steal the V-Core VRM off of it, because this is actually, like, this VRM is actually relatively nice. So we have a CHL8228G, uh, I think. Yeah, it's an 8228G. That's the standard voltage controller for 7970s. So we have a CHL8228G. That's a reconfigurable 8 phase. So here it's running in 7 plus 1 mode. Uh, you can actually run it in anything up to even like down to even, I think, 4 plus 4. So that's a really funky controller because you can do all kinds of like, you can do like a 4 plus 3 off of it or a 4 plus 4 or whatever. Um, but here it is running as a 7 plus 1. Um, the VRM, like the MOSFETs themselves, are a combination of international rectifier IRC. Uh, 6894s and 6811s. So our favorite combination of like high-end direct FETs. Uh, essentially, you can think of this as being like 60, like these are roughly equivalent to like a 60 amp or 65, 70 amp power stage. 
Um, that, that's like a good way to, to think of them because they, they get about the same efficiency as those. They're not quite so good at high frequencies because they are relatively slow to turn on and off, but they can move a lot of current. And so we do have a seven phase V core for that, which is actually, that's two phases more than what you get on like a reference R9290X and those use the same spec MOSFETs. And it's actually one phase more than what you get on a Fury X. And again, same spec MOSFETs. So relatively nice V core VRM. Then we get the same um, single IR, uh, single phase memory power. Um, that just runs at 1.6 volts on this card, which is kind of interesting because normally it runs at like, most cards will generally be at 1.55 volts stock, but for some reason the VaporX cards from Sapphire, they all come with 1.6 volts memory power. I'm not sure why. Um, but it might be to sand, like uh, improve their memory overclocking capabilities. And I think on this card you can actually control the memory voltage in software, which is kind of cool because uh, everything is hooked up to that controller. Funnily enough, vCore control on this one is also broken. So on the VaporX 6 gig I have, uh, if you try to control vCore voltage, it doesn't work. Um, yeah, the, this card has the same issue. You can change memory voltage, but you can't touch vCore. No idea why, but it's just a thing. Um, anyway, so, you know... Uh, uh, that, that's kind of the, so I was like, okay, so worst case scenario, it doesn't work and, and I make it an e-power. So then I plugged the card in and I started stabby stabbing it um, with a multimeter to figure out what voltages we have and what voltages we don't have. Um, so vCore was good. vCore was coming up at 1 volt. Memory power was coming up at 1.6 volts. VDDCI was at 1, 0.85 volts. This thing right here was at 1.8 volts, so there's a 1.8 volts rail on these. Um, which I wasn't aware of. These two chips right here, those are low dropout regulators. Those are both spitting, those both convert 12 volts into 5 volts. Um, I'm not sure why the card needs so many, two of them. I guess it's because uh, these take quite a bit of power to drive, might be because of that. Anyway, so there's two 5 volt, um, you know, regulators over there. Uh, both of those worked. And then there was this thing right here, no Verki. That was sitting at 0.5 volts. And so, Initially, I was like, oh, I, well, you know, initially I got worried that it's like tripping some kind of uh, safety or something's wrong with it. Um, so I got the oscilloscope out and I checked it out. And uh, it was actually fine. Like the, the, the output of this was actually fine. Um, it wasn't, you know, oscillating, like it wasn't going really high voltage and then tripping safety and shutting down and then turning on again and going really high voltage. And that was my main concern, right? Because if it was going from really high to really low at the right frequency, the multimeter would average that out to 0.5. Whereas a oscilloscope will actually show you that, you know, you have a nice, lovely GPU core destroying sawtooth waveform or whatever. Right, like some kind of mess coming out of the VRM. So that luckily wasn't the case. Um, it was just sitting at like 0.5 volts and there was a bit of a mess on the, so then I, then I started checking out the voltage controller, which here is an APW7165. Yeah, it's a 7165. So I checked out the voltage controller, you know, got the data sheet for it, checked every single pin on it, couldn't find anything wrong with any of them. Um, at which point I was just like, oh, screw it. You know, I, I mean, I don't really care about doing this properly. I mean, I don't do anything properly ever anyway. So why would I do this properly? So the, the, the probably the good, like correct way to do this would be like try replace the dual NFAT uh, of, the, uh, of the VRM, maybe replace the, the controller as well. I, I, I don't know. I don't care. I basically decided, well, that rail is supposed to be at one volt and it isn't. Um, but I'm pretty sure it'll work if we just give it close to one volt, um, which is why we have this bodge wire run over here running up to VDDCI because VDDCI by spec is like 0.85 or 0.95 or something like that. And uh, yeah, that actually turns the card on. So this, this runs now. Um, so if you just shove uh, yeah, what, 0.85 volts into your into your PCIe power, then uh, yeah, it, it turns the card on. So, and I'm actually going to show you that this thing does indeed run because you know that's kind of hard to hard to believe considering my, my track record of generally breaking things, not fixing things. So, give me a, si a second while I uh, do a quick transition and. There, so you're gonna have that for a bit, and I'm, I'm gonna point the camera at the monitor. He, well, I should have gotten two cameras for this. Um, did not think this through. I'm too hyped about the card working to think think about proper video making like practices. Like, who who the hell cares? Like, does anybody actually expect me to have good video making practices? No. Well, I hope not. <laughs> Because you're not going to have the, because I don't have them. Anyway, um, 
Okay, so this is a problem. Okay, yeah, that's not going to work. Hop. So, test system. There. So this is our test rig. Um, it's a micro X299 micro 2 from EVGA. I've modified the motherboard quite heavily, um, which is why there's all this and, and that and that. And anyway, that, that's going to be like a separate video. Um, anyway, let's plug this in. And I'm just going to show that this does initialize and put out an image. I've not actually checked that it like that the core is working, but I don't think the core is dead because that was the main issue. Right, and that was just spitting out way below spec, not way above spec. And as long as it's not above spec, it should be fine. Uh, is my logic anyway. So, yeah, um, it does get into the BIOS. I've not actually checked if it'll like install drivers or run any games, um, which you know that that always like there could be some you know damage to the core proper. But eh, considering that it didn't put out an image before, I consider this a, a you know. I consider this a success <laughs> at this point because, quite frankly, if there's any damage to the to the core or memory, that, that I'm not fixing it. So, as the card, there's our monitor. Back to the card. Just gonna press the power. Turn that on. The card spins up. And uh, actually, well, I'm just gonna point you at the postcode right there. 79D5B2. There, and it beeped. And now I'm going to... Oh. See? It works. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> like, I was really worried that it wouldn't work on 0.85 volts. But apparently it does. So that's good. So card runs. Um, yep. This disaster actually worked out. So yeah, that's that's an option if you have a, you know, if you have a 7970 or something in your PCIe rail for whatever reason. I still don't know why that rail's broken, right? I, I just know it wasn't putting out what it was supposed to. So I grabbed what it needs from somewhere else. Um, but yeah, if you have like a Tahiti card that, you know, has that broken, you can just grab VDDCI and shove that in there. And the funny thing is, I actually think, because uh, VDDCI on the 28 nanometer cards, I think it's control, well, no, it's controllable on 290Xs. I don't think it's necessarily controllable on this. But I do think that, you know, if, uh, well, VDDCI is like relatively robust on these. Like it should be good to like 1.05 or 1.1 volts, I think. Um, well, like, worst case scenario, I kill the card again, right? But we already know I do that regularly. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, at this point, it's a zombie. So, you know, who cares if it dies again? Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm basically thinking that since that's hooked up to VDDCI, uh, if I either have VDDCI on software control or, I don't know, I might just vault on it. Um, well, I've solved one of the issues that these cards have on liquid nitrogen where it's actually... The, the PCIe power rail, um, well, it's not really an issue, but they have a cold bug and it's entirely tied to their like PCIe interface. So actually, if you're running like a 7970 on liquid nitrogen or something, um, well, sub zero, you know, in like well below minus 60 degrees, um, you essentially have to put the PCIe interface into 2.0 instead of 3.0, because if you're on 3.0, um, the card basically cold bugs uh, immediately. It's just the PCIe interface falls over. So, um, what you need to do is run them on PCIe 2.0, and then if you want to run them even colder than what PCIe 2.0 alone allows, you need to raise the, the PCIe power um, rail right there. So you need to raise the voltage on that. And uh, yeah, since this is hooked up to VDDCI, I mean, the main concern is that I'll blow up VDDCI at that point, but um, which is the memory controller of the GPU. But... Uh, I should be able to get it running. Like, well, basically, I, you know, if you did this on like a 290X, you'd have VDDCI, like your, you'd have PCIe power con voltage control from your VDDCI, ra uh, VDDCI rail. Um, on this one, for me, I mean, I'm probably going to have to mod it anyway, but because um, I, like, I think the controller used for the VDDCI rail doesn't actually have software support, but still, um, card works. You know, that, <laughs> it's good enough for me. Um, 
And yeah, I'm going to turn this off. And I guess thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. Uh, I'm probably going to clean up that wire if anybody's going to be like, hey, that wire is too long. Yes, it is too long. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it a lot shorter. Anyway, um, yeah, if you have comments, questions, suggestions, you can leave them in the comments section. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon and uh, shirts are, well, there's no shirts, cart. well, they're just, there's a Patreon and there will be shirts in the future. I've just not gotten around to like fixing the mess that I've made with that. Um, especially also because Teams, Teespring was doing some rework stuff. But yeah, there, if you want to support AHOC, there is a Patreon. Uh, and the Patreon, you know, allows me to do things like buy broken HD 7970s off of, the in, uh, off of eBay and, and then fix them really, really badly. <laughs> anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye. Where's the map? Wait, yeah, stop button. Where is it? There it is.